Good morning and congratulations on arriving on time. My family's like 13 of them on the way in. Well, okay, they're just walking in. And, um, and, and, and we have, uh, <laughs> no, no, please. And, and we, don't, we don't know if we have the children's message crew yet, but Michael's here, so. <laughs> So maybe, uh, I don't think it's the roads, but maybe it's the holiday. Anyway, welcome to worship this morning. Good to have you here. Um, if, if there are some drifting in yet, let's give them a chance by taking a moment just to greet one another. And uh, if you're not going to be here Christmas Eve, maybe you want to wish someone a Merry Christmas. Let's just take a moment to do that. We have been celebrating Advent, and if you're not familiar with the word, it's just uh, a season leading up to uh, a celebration of our Savior's birth. And we've been thinking about some themes related to that. The first week, we, we thought about the hope that Jesus brings and what it means to unwrap that. And, and then we thought about the peace that, that our Savior gives us and the joy that he brings into our lives. And we'll add one more candle a little later this morning. But I just want to direct you into worship with some words from Isaiah. And Isaiah 40 is really familiar to a lot of us because it's, it's the part about mounting up on wings like eagles and the Lord renewing our strength and everything. But Isaiah 40 once is an interesting thing. It says this, I've chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God, and I will strengthen you and help you and uphold you with my right hand. Um, let's pray together. Father, we ask that you would do that for us um, because we all need some strengthening and we all need uh, to know that you love us. And we thank you that, that in this season you remind us so often of that. And I pray that, that our time of worship together today would be pleasing in your sight, done for your glory in Jesus' name. Love songs touch our hearts in a very special way. And God gave us the greatest love song that never grows old, that we can never tire of. God's love song was Jesus, who he sent to earth for us. It came upon the midnight clear that glorious song of old from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold peace on the earth goodwill to men from heaven's all gracious king the world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Still through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled, and still their heavenly music floats through all the weary world. strife and hear the angels sing glory to God in the highest glory to God evermore good news great joy for all melody breaks through the sun
to touch their harps of gold. Glory to God in the highest. The angels sang that proclamation to the shepherds that first Christmas. Glory to God. Praise to God who is worthy, whose praise we should never, ever stop. We should proclaim forever. He is worthy and glory to God in the highest. He sent his glory here on earth in, the, in his son Jesus. Praise God. You are the first, you go before, you are the last, Lord, you're the encore, your name in lights for all to see, the starry holes declare your glory.
you guys sit there so we don't burn the church down today. <laughs> Go sit on the view for me, Grace. All right, it looks like pretty much everybody's up here. Uh, can any of you uh, tell me what this is? A present, right? Um, well, I was going to give this to Joseph, but he's not here, so it looks like if I mess up, I can't blame it on the other guy. Uh, so I'm going to give myself this present. And looks like I gave myself a remote control helicopter. It's pretty awesome. I would love to fly it in here, but I'd probably ruin the tech or uh, hurt one of you or myself or give somebody out in the audience a haircut by mistake. So this is an awesome present. Um, can anybody tell me why we give each other presents? Yeah, Keegan. Gabby? To celebrate the gift that God gave us, yeah. Uh, shh. Um, we give each other uh, presents a lot of times to show that we, uh, that we love each other. I was going to give this to Joseph and say that I love him like a brother, but I love me too, so I guess that's okay. <laughs> so Now, what is this? <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's not as pretty looking as that one on the outside, but I mean, I guess it's on the inside that counts, so I'll, uh, I'll open this one. This, this does not look like the best present I've received. Well, there's more tape. All right. So on the inside, it looks like there's some, some newspaper and, oh. Can anybody tell me what, what this is? Keegan? This is the baby Jesus. Now, when we started out with that ugly kind of looking wrappy, wrapping paper, we wouldn't have expected that we would get something, you know, you know great. That's how it was in, in the real thing, because he was born in, in a manger, not in a nice, nice hotel or, or a nice hospital like we have nowadays. He was born with you know, horses and sheep and other animals that probably didn't smell too great. And although it wasn't wrapped in nice wrapping paper that, you know, we, we could buy from a store, it was easily the greatest present ever, much better than a remote control helicopter. So um, uh, I, I think we'll pray and then I'll send you guys off to uh, Children's Church. Uh, Lord, um, I thank you today that these kids can be here and that uh, they can all celebrate uh, the, the greatest gift that you could have given us, uh, much better than any thing that you've put on this earth as, as a toy or, a, or something else we're looking for. Um, we thank you for the love that it took to give us your son and all of the wonderful things that uh, you've given us through him. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys can go to Children's Church. We have been, uh, can you hear me okay? Is this working? Yeah, it's working. Okay. It's kind of hard to tell from here sometimes because the speakers are up there. So, um, We have been spending some time in the Gospels together over the last few weeks hearing the Christmas story. And we're going to, by the way, we're going to hear it again tomorrow night. If uh, you are able to be here tomorrow night for the Christmas Eve candlelight service, that is going to be awesome. We're going to have a wonderful time just hearing the story again and singing a lot of the songs, a lot of the Christmas carols that you all know and love. And uh, that'll be great. But we want to spend just a little time this morning focusing on uh, what does it mean that God sent his love into the world when he sent Jesus. And, and to find that, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 1. And uh, I'll be reading verses 18 through 25. We're not going to project them or anything today. Just kind of take them in. If you have a Bible open, you can read along. I'm in the New International Version. But otherwise, just hear the story. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Here's what it tells us. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. So uh, we're going to explore what, what God's love for us means in the story of Joseph this morning. This is a little different. You know, Luke tells us the story from Mary's perspective. Matthew, after telling a genealogy of Jesus, he skips all that. And he goes right to the husband's side of the story. And so we're going to look at that this morning. But first, um, I want to share with you a story that I heard this week. I have been listening to the Audible book, um, Love Does. Maybe some of you have read that book by Bob Goff. If you, if you haven't, I haven't finished it yet, but I can recommend it based on what I've already read. And, uh, and what, what Bob Goff does in his book, Love Does, is he spends the first chapter telling the story of how he got to know Jesus and then a story of somebody who helped him along the way. And, and um, Bob became a Christian in high school when he was probably a freshman, sophomore in high school, kind of young, immature high school student at the time. And uh, he was actually, uh, a friend shared Jesus with him after shooting him with a pellet gun. And uh, the, the pellet actually penetrated and they dug it out of his gut and then they, you know, secretly. Uh, and, and then his friend started telling him about Jesus because he was so glad he didn't kill his buddy, you know. Um, and so he became a follower of Jesus. And, and after he started hanging around with Christians at his high school, he noticed this guy who had uh, a beard and uh, a motorcycle and a girlfriend, all the things that, that Bob wanted in life, you know. And, uh, and this older guy was hanging around campus, and he wondered what the deal was and found out he was a, a youth worker with Young Life. And so as, as Bob got to know what it meant to be a Christian, he, he spent a lot of time with Randy, this youth worker, and, uh, and, and they developed a, a real friendship. Then his junior year came, and uh, the start of the junior year was not a good one for Bob because he wasn't much of a student. Uh, he, he, he didn't make the grades, he, you know, he didn't enjoy the classes, he would rather just be in the outdoors. And he decided just a short while into his junior year that school was for the birds. After all, he had, he had wheels, he had an old VW Bug, uh, he had about $70 cash, and uh, he, de he decided at the end of one week he was just sick of it all, and he was just going to chuck it and just drop out of school and, and, and just leave. And he lived in California. He was going to go up to Yosemite, and he figured he'd climb rocks whenever he felt like it there, and he could flip some pancakes or something and earn enough money to survive and, and uh, forget all this school stuff. So he got up one Sunday morning early and decided just to take off, just to disappear. He threw his sleeping bag and, and a few clothes in the back of his VW, and, and he's on his way out of town, and he realized he hadn't seen Randy, the young life guy, in a while. And he really appreciated Randy, so he decided he was going to stop at Randy's house just to say goodbye. Got to Randy's house, went, went to the door, knocked on the door. It's really early Sunday morning. And after a couple minutes, Randy came to the door looking like death warmed over, just still half asleep, you know, bleary-eyed. And, Bob, what are you doing? What's up? I've decided school isn't for me. I'm going to head up to Yosemite, make a new life for myself up there. 
Randy just listened for a while and then he says, well, like, when were you planning on leaving? Right now. I just stopped by to, I just stopped to say goodbye to you on my way out of town. Randy looks at him for a minute and he says, uh, you know, can, can you hang on for just a minute? Well, can you wait here while I check something out a minute? Goes back into the house and it takes more than a minute, you know. And finally, Randy comes back to the door and he's got a, an old backpack slung over one shoulder and he says, okay, Bob, I'm in. He says, what, what, what you, you want to go with me? Yeah, Bob, I'm all in. Let's go. Well, what are you, you going to do there? He says, don't worry about me. You know, once you get settled after a few days, I can, I'll hitch a ride back. I'm with you, Bob. I'm with you. So he climbs into Bob's VW and off they go. Get up to Yosemite and Bob realizes that uh, he didn't ever think about bringing a tent. He's got a sleeping bag, so they find one of these rental tent, platform tent things that nobody's occupying and they sneak into it. And they spend the night. And they wake up in the morning and, and they go to the, uh, the, the little cafeteria at the National Park and, and they get something to eat. And, uh, and Randy waits while Bob gets a job application for the cafeteria and he fills it all out. And when they're done eating, he brings it up to the manager and he doesn't have to wait long to get the answer. <laughs> no. <laughs> They're not interested. So he figures he'll go to an outfitter, one of the outfitters, and he goes to one of the outfitters and he says, um, hey, uh, you know, I don't have any experience, but uh, I love the outdoors. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm young and I can work hard. Uh, what have you got for me? They say, uh, we don't have any work for you and good luck finding anything in this town. And he walks out of the outfitter just dejected and, and, and his older friend Randy says, uh, well, don't give up. Come on, you got a lot to offer. These people just haven't figured it out yet, Bob. Come on, let's apply a few more places. And so he prods them on and, and all day Bob applies for jobs and all day nothing, nothing, nothing. And at night uh, they, they crawl back into the same unoccupied tent and Bob lays there just stewing all night. Man, I don't have any money now, and, and I don't have a job, and this is so stupid. And, and Randy, the whole time, is just snoring. <laughs> wakes up in the morning, discouraged. Randy wakes up, hey, come on, buddy, let's go climb some rocks. And they, they go off to climb some rocks for, for the morning, and then, and then it's back to looking for a job. And, and again, just every place in town, Bob stops, nothing, nothing, nothing. And, and so that evening, Randy paid for Bob's dinner at a restaurant and when they came outside they sat on the front bumper of his rusty VW and, and Bob says, you know, Randy, I, I'm thinking this probably wasn't a very good idea. I think I'm just going to give up on it and I think I'm just going to go back home and go back to school. Randy's like, well, whatever you want, Bob, but you know, whatever you decide, I'm with you. <laughs> the drive home is... is five or six silent hours. <laughs> they pull up to, to Randy's house, you know, to drop him off. And Bob notices Randy's girlfriend's car is in the driveway. That's weird. And uh, he helps Randy carry some of his stuff up to the house. So he walks on into the front door and he looks around and there's dish stacks of dishes on the floor in the living room. And there's a microwave on the couch and there's wrapping paper all over everywhere. Bob's thinking, what in the world? And then uh, Randy's girlfriend comes bounding into the room. Honey, you're home! And gives him a big hug. And, and all of a sudden Bob realizes they just got married. These are wedding gifts. And the Sunday morning that he knocked on the door was like the morning after their wedding. He'd interrupted a honeymoon. And yet, Randy had gone with him. With his bride's blessing. On a fool's errand, you know. And along with the embarrassment was just this overwhelming, what? You care about me that much? But love does sometimes some really outrageous things, doesn't it? 
So back up 2,000 years. And we're introduced to this guy named Joseph. And you know, he's anticipating a, a wedding, but not yet. And, you know, the Bible never tells us a word that Joseph says. Have you noticed that? He just does. He just, we're told what he thinks. We're told what he, what he does. And uh, yet it's such an important part of this love story we think of at Christmas, isn't it? Joseph and Mary are betrothed. That's a word we don't really know. It's part of their first century Jewish culture. And what you did is, you, you know, marriages were somewhat arranged between families. And, you know, you didn't just fall in love and then think about getting married. And, and so there's, you know, she's probably going to be the one for you and he's probably going to be the one for you. And then when they get a little older, when, 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 when they approach adulthood and they're ready, you know, and, 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 and they both get to the point where this marriage is really going to be, then they're betrothed. And it's, it's a promise that is almost like the promise of marriage except for a year or so, they'll plan to be married. They'll be living at their parents' place yet. Uh, you know, there, uh, there won't be any sexual intimacy, they're, 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 but they're promised to one another, and it's a big, big deal. So Joseph and Mary are betrothed, and then Mary takes off to go visit a relative for a few months, and she comes back, and word is all over town. You know, she's pregnant. Joseph, the, the angel didn't tell Joseph that. He, he figured it out, you know, and, and the word was out. And we're told because he was a righteous man, because he was just, because he was committed to doing the right thing, he decided to divorce her. You see, betrothed couples are called husband and wife, and, and when, you, when you say it's off, that's like a divorce. And he's not righteous because he's you know, not going to go through with it, but he's, he's called a righteous man because he decides to divorce her quietly. Just let it go. Love, sometimes, you know, when, when we're offended, it just, we just let it go. He's thinking about Mary, isn't he? He's thinking about her reputation. He could, you know, everybody expected, everybody expected the marriage would be off. And everybody expected that Joseph would make a public spectacle of Mary. But he can't. Love moves him to end it all quietly. Not to cause any more pain than she's already experienced, even though he's got gut-wrenching pain over this too, you know. Um, so that's what he determines to do, right? Till the angel comes. Did you notice, by the way, the angel comes in a dream? I mean, if, if the angels couldn't come, couldn't it come in a way that the neighbors would see? You know, but it's in a dream. Hey, Joseph, what's the deal with Mary? And, and you guys are still together? Well, yeah, but, you know, the, the, the baby, it's from God. An angel told me in a dream. Oh, yeah, right, Joseph. An angel dream. And, you know, and now there's not only the, the normal amount of rejection he'd feel in that culture, but this, how stupid do you think we are that you have to make up that story, right? But... But because the angel says this child is from God, Joseph makes, he, he'd made one loving decision to divorce her quietly. Now he makes a greater loving decision. I'm going to be with her. I'm going to stick with her. I'm with you, Mary. Right? And, and it doesn't tell us much else. It just says, and he did not know her until, you know, after the baby was born. And then they became a normal couple. Some legends don't think so, but no, normal couple, normal family. But the honeymoon was on hold till after the baby was born. And, and see, love does that, doesn't it? Love is patient, the Bible tells us. So Joseph is a wonderful example of what real love looks like, right? He's the opposite of a deadbeat dad, right? But this isn't really a story about Joseph either, is it? Because the real story goes back even more than 2,000 years. It, 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 
it goes back to, you know, before the time that Isaiah made the prophecy. The name Emmanuel literally means God's with us, right? And it's found three times in the Bible, twice in Isaiah, in the words that foreshadowed Jesus coming, and then once here. God with us. God with us. God had a plan to be with us. Philippians tells us that God the Son left the glory that He knew, right? And humbled Himself and became one of us out of love for us. Isn't that really mind-blowing? Isn't that amazing? Because you and I, we've been foolish. We've messed up. We've pushed away from God. And He humbled Himself and became one of us. Our maker catches us running a fool's errand and climbs in with us into this world. And he doesn't condone uh, the choices we make and he doesn't shame us either. Instead, he sends his son into this world to say, I'm with you. And that cost him more than a honeymoon, right? It cost him a cross. But love does. Love acts. That's real love. Love isn't words or feelings alone. And that's one of the things we need to remember when we celebrate the birth of Jesus. Francis Chan called it crazy love in, in his book. Remember that? And, and maybe you hear, heard the story of Randy, you know, and his, and his new wife, and you think, man, that couple's crazy. How many of us would do that, right? <laughs> Come on, how many of you would do that? <laughs> it's nuts, right? And... I wonder how many people in Joseph's little town must have thought he was nuts to hang with Mary, you know. And God's love is a little hard for us to understand too. Isn't it? And maybe you've even had a hard time believing it, that that God would so love you. But that's the message of the gospel. And it's true. That's how much God really loves you. Do you get that? And, and how do you answer that kind of love? Maybe that's the question we need to, to have in our minds as, as we celebrate this Christmas. Do I really get it that I'm that loved? And what does it look like to answer that kind of love? Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Thank you, Father. Uh, for showing your love to us and giving your son, reaching out to us in our foolishness and showing us a way that we could be reconciled with you and to be with the one with us forever one day and to daily live with the one who's with us. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. Please fill this celebration with your presence and your glory and help us to be amazed again that you would love us that much. Amen. Well, um, I lost my bulletin, but I think we're praying next, aren't we? (laughs) Uh, After the offering, okay. So... um, Let's join together in singing one of, one of the Christmas carols we know well. If you want to sing parts, it's number 113. Angels we have heard on high Sweetly singing o'er the plain And the mountains in reply Echo back their joyous strain Yeah. 
It's good singing. Will you be seated, please, so we can uh, bring our gifts to the Lord with our offering? Before we pray, um, I think you've got the video ready back there. Let's um, hear some thoughts about love that some of you recently shared. This is 
shadow work of the baby Max Shantan. Everything about the manger scene. The baby, Mary and Joseph, the animals, we focus on that. But as I grew up and uh, matured my faith, I realized it's all about salvation and the entire process. Through the birth of Christ, God demonstrated immense love for us. It's a great demonstration of how we should be in our through our love Amen. One of the ways that uh, we express our love to God is in prayer, and one of the greatest things that we can do for one another to show our love is, is to pray for one another. So um, as, as we go to a time of prayer, I um, just want to take a moment to give you an update on a couple of people and uh, to have you think about whether there's a prayer request you'd like to make for anyone. We have prayed uh, a lot for um, quite a number of years for Dylan Lawrence. And uh, so I, I just want to give you an update that Dylan was taken to an Oshkosh facility Thursday to be treated for depression. And uh, he may get out on Monday or Tuesday. So let's pray that he does and, and uh, that, that God will bless him and, and uh, help him. And then for Bill Cole, who was scheduled, you remember, to have surgery, and, uh, and it's um, a rather important cancer surgery, and, and it's timely, but he has shingles. And so we need to pray that he'll get over the shingles and be able to have that surgery soon, and that God will bring healing through that. Are there others? Any other special concerns this morning? If there are not, let's... Um, Let's begin with the words of the Lord's Prayer and then continue to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We do lift up and exalt you, O God, our, our Father, and we thank you for your boundless love for us, for your steadfast love. And we thank you for that beautiful name, Emmanuel, because of, of the prophecy fulfilled and the meaning that it has, that you are truly with us. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into this, this world and living as one of us. And we thank you for giving your very life for us. We pray, Lord, that, that you would fill our Christmas celebrations with the depth of, of meaning that you have for us. Help us to enjoy one another, maybe people that we celebrate with, but help us mostly to enjoy you. Help us to express our love for you as we experience your love for us. We thank you for providing us with so many things in life and, and thank you that as we near the end of another year, 
it, it, it's been a difficult year for some people here. It's been a difficult year for some people we know, and yet, once again, we can see your faithfulness. We can see your goodness. We can see your steadfastness in the way you've cared for us. And so we, we lift up our gratitude to you, and we give you thanks. Thank you for showing yourself to us, God, that what we understand of you from your word gives us a picture of one who is all wise, all powerful, and whose compassion shows no bounds. We thank you that you are a God of truth who speaks truth into our lives, even when sometimes we don't really want to hear it. Thank you for the many ways you show your love to us and your patience with us. Thank you for the people you've brought into our lives, God, that have not only enriched us, but, but have told us the very things we need to regain hope and, and to keep on going. We pray, Lord, that we might be that kind of encouragement to others, that we would be in at least some way willing to act in love the way that uh, Joseph did, the way that uh, Bob's friend did, um, and, and just to mirror the way that you act in love toward us. Make us your loving people. May that love be evident within your family and may that love spill over to everyone we meet. And Lord, we lift up today those who are ill and those who are going through hard times. And we've got a long prayer list, but we want to pray especially today for Dylan, who has walked a long road with this illness and... Uh, it is easy for us to understand the depression he experiences, and yet we know that you can see him through this, that you have a plan and a purpose in, in all things, and we pray that you would be his help and his strength, and that he'd be able to enjoy a Christmas day at home with his family. We pray for Bill, Lord. Those of us that have, have had cancer diagnoses understand uh, what a difficult thing that is and when it reoccurs that's more difficult and when a surgery is needed and postponed that's really hard we pray that you'd wrap your arms of love around Bill and Phyllis and that you would keep him in your care and that you would bring about healing in his life And Lord, we, we pray for people throughout our nation and the peoples of this world. We thank you that, that your gospel is for all people. And we pray that even through the celebration of the birth of their Savior by Christians around this globe, that, that you would create occasions for us to talk about the hope that's in us and to share your love with others. We pray in Jesus' mighty and merciful name. Amen. Well, I want to take uh, a minute to spotlight a couple of things. Oh, and one of them that's up here is this is rather late because if kids didn't pick these up to, to look at during the service, they probably... Uh, you know, they, they missed something they could have enjoyed. But um, if you have kids in your family that uh, want to think a little bit more about the story that we read from Matthew 1, 18 to 25, there are kids' activity sheets at both doors. So I'd invite you to take one along for a child in your family or grandkid if, if you can. And then I want to call your attention to um, a faith walking weekend that you got an insert about. This is um, a really powerful weekend retreat. And uh, Friday nights and Saturdays are hard to come by, but uh, it, it would be a wonderful investment in uh, growing your relationship with God and, and your effectiveness in, in sharing with others. And so if, if that sounds interesting to you when you read it, check it out. The, the website there has some more information about faith walking. And we'll be sponsoring that on the 25th of January, which sounds a ways off, but it'll be here before we know it. So 
Um, we'll mention that again next week as well. And then Christmas Eve, if you can be part of our celebration tomorrow night, it is going to be carols and readings and candlelight and just a wonderful celebration of Jesus' birth. So I hope you're able to come back and maybe bring a, bring a family member or friend along. Would you like to stand, if, if you're able, for our benediction and closing song? And as we're going to sing in a minute, it is uh, our joyful task to tell the good news of Jesus to others. And it can start with something as simple as, hey, Merry Christmas. So uh, as we sing it, maybe think about somebody you can share the love of Christmas with this week. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And if you don't make it here tomorrow night, Merry Christmas. Amen. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and